Today I want to talk about uncomfortable feelings. We all have them. We have them pretty often, in fact. Feelings that kind of come up in our body that feel uncomfortable. Sensations that kind of really are so unpleasant and and discomforting that we just like them to go away and we'll try and make them go away. These uncomfortable feelings. And so there's often a school of thought that says if you're having an uncomfortable feeling, then then just try and get rid of it really at any cost. Don't let that uncomfortable feeling hang around. And I suppose in today's episode, I want to. I want to be in praise, really, I suppose, of uncomfortable feelings and suggest that an alternative way of responding to the fact that you have feelings that are uncomfortable is not so much to try and chase them away, but to to be with them, to allow yourself to feel the uncomfortable feelings. You see, often when we have uncomfortable feelings, we'll come up with ways of trying to soothe those feelings. And sometimes that's okay. But a lot of the time, what it will lead us to do is to do things which kind of sell us down the river a little bit later on. That in our immediate moment of discomfort, we'll soothe immediate us. But by doing so, we'll often do that by letting future us down. And so in that moment of uncomfortable feelings, what we'll do is, I don't know, we'll decide not to do that thing that we wanted because it feels scary. And those scary feelings are coming up and they're real. You know, they don't feel nice at all. They really don't. And so instead of going through with that idea that we had, we take a step back. We think, I won't do that. That opportunity for growth or for something exciting or for something interesting, which because it's new and because it's unfamiliar, comes with these uncomfortable feelings. We actually step away from that growth. Or it might be that we soothe ourselves with food or, I don't know, with alcohol or, you know, whatever it happens to be, we all have our self-soothe, don't we? And so in those moments of uncomfortable feelings, we miss out on opportunity. Or we'll do something that we don't really want to do. It just kind of soothes us in the moment, but it kind of runs the risk of maybe harming us going forward. And so... I wonder what would happen if we gave ourselves permission to feel the feelings that we're actually feeling as and when they come up. So when these uncomfortable feelings arise, whether they're fear or anxiety or whatever, we don't need to chase them away or sadness, you know, we don't need to chase them away, but we can we can kind of get curious about them. And you see, one of the things, especially if it's kind of an emotional feeling, one of the ways that we'll sometimes ensure that we don't feel those uncomfortable feelings is we'll we'll move to another emotion. A very common one is if we're feeling sad, we'll move to anger. Anger just feels anger just feels easier, doesn't it, than to feel sadness and hurt and grief. To go to anger. And yet we're missing out on these feelings that we are actually feeling. We're actually robbing ourselves of the permission to be sad or to feel hurt in those moments with all the information that that gives us. And when you think about it, can you imagine a newborn baby and you cast a spell on that baby to say, you will never feel uncomfortable feelings for the entirety of your long life. Would that spell be a blessing or a curse? Because if you really think about it, if you were to meet somebody at the end of a long life who had never felt uncomfortable feelings, what kind of life, just at a guess, do you think they'll have lived What will they have done? What 
kind of growth will they have been able to make? Is that spell actually a curse? In fact, is that not one of the biggest curses that we can give to people to say that they would never have uncomfortable feelings, given that we're human and given how uncomfortable feelings arise? Might that actually be a curse rather than a blessing? Might it not imply that that person has not lived their fullest life? And so whereas the tendency is to try and escape uncomfortable feelings, one of the things I would suggest is that a lot of the good stuff in life is at the other side of comfortable of uncomfortable feelings. A lot of the good stuff in life is at the other side of uncomfortable feelings. And so if we step up to those uncomfortable feelings, it's almost like it's a doorway to the things that we really want, a doorway that we have to walk through rather than step away from. And if we keep stepping away from that door, we'll just be in the same place as we always were. And that's probably at best because often what happens then is that we become so used to where we are step back that it gives room for another door to be inserted, another wall to be put up with another doorway. And then it can get uncomfortable to get through that and our world can get smaller and smaller and smaller. And so my kind of gentle invite in this episode is When you next feel those uncomfortable feelings, I wonder what it would be like rather than just step away from them or chase them away or or do something to try and get rid of them in that moment. I wonder what it would be like as an experiment to just try them on. Stick with them for a little bit. Get curious about them, like where actually are they in my body? When I say I've got this uncomfortable feeling, where is it? Is it in my throat? Is it in my chest? Is it in my tummy? Is it somewhere else? Is it in my shoulders? Is it in my jaw? Where is this uncomfortable feeling and where is it actually bodily showing up? And wherever it is, what does it feel like? Is it tight? Is it kind of tanny? Is it heavy? But what is the quality of that feeling, the characteristic of that feeling? And it's a question we often don't ask ourselves, you know, because we want to get the feeling away. So we will step back from the thing we want to do or we will self-soothe with, I don't know, chocolate in my case. (laughs) Or we'll do something, you know, to try and chase it away. We'll put a different emotion in there that feels a little bit easier to handle, a little bit more permitted to be able to feel. But what actually is it? Where is it? And what does it feel like? And what's the character of that feeling? And what happens if you were to just welcome it, even breathe into it? What happens when you breathe into it? You know, if you've got a feeling in your chest, for instance, what happens if you really take that breath and breathe directly into that part of your body? Does it stay there? Does it move? Does it dissipate? Does it get go from something solid into something gas? These are all kind of interesting questions that we never allow ourselves to ask. And we can get so curious about the outside world. You know, as we walk through a park, for instance, and we'll notice the flowers or we'll see a bird flying from one tree to another. But our inner world... What's going on in our own bodies? I wonder what would happen if we got curious about that and allowed those uncomfortable feelings to be there in such a way that we actually get to be able to develop the skill of tolerating those uncomfortable feelings. Because once we get to that point where we can tolerate those uncomfortable feelings, we don't necessarily have to then move away, they don't become so overwhelming that we have to do something different. It actually allows us to to feel those feelings and do what we want to do anyway. It actually allows us to live that fullest life because we're actually getting some practice here 
in that muscle and that curiosity, which allows us to stay with an uncomfortable feeling, get to know it, get to understand it, breathe into it and allow it to move on. And so that's my little experiment that you might want to try next time an uncomfortable feeling comes up. Because once you have that skill of being able to tolerate an uncomfortable feeling and sit with it and allow yourself that feeling, because that's your birthright to have these feelings. You won't necessarily feel the need to drive it away. And I wonder what difference that would make to your life if you were able to be in the feeling that you're actually having. Let it be for a while until it goes away. I wonder what difference that would make in your life if you could tolerate those feelings to such an extent that you didn't feel as though you had to step away from them and that you could actually make the choices that you want to make that's in your own best interests. So if you like this idea, please share it so that more people can find it useful. You can subscribe to this podcast completely free wherever you get them. If you prefer video, go to a slice of therapy.com and they're all there, all the podcast episodes. And you can work with me directly. I'm Alan Parry. I'm the director of the Liverpool Psychotherapy Practice. And you can find that at liverpoolpsychotherapy.co.uk. So thanks for listening as ever. And I'll be back tomorrow with another.